There is one creator, one consciousness, and you are a unique expression of that. Hi, I'm Amy and welcome to my channel. This channel is all about discussing spirituality and psychology so that you can manifest your relationships. And in today's video, I'm going to discuss the law of projection. And just to make it clear, I'm talking about this in the spiritual sense, not the psychology sense. They are slightly different. But in a spiritual sense, it's sometimes called the law of mirroring. It's sometimes called the subconscious mirror or more prominently in the manifesting community, everyone is you pushed out. You might have been introduced to this probably along your manifesting journey, particularly if you have stumbled across Neville Goddard because he coined the phrase, everything is yourself pushed out. But I prefer to call it the law of projection because I think that is what describes what's happening a little bit better. And I personally feel like it's more relatable when you think of it as a projection. So you might have already integrated the teachings that everyone is you pushed out and you might consciously or intellectually know that whatever happens in your experience is a direct reflection of what's going on within. You might have even been taught about parallel realities or alternative universes or what's sometimes called reality transferring. Now, my personal belief is that there are no parallel realities. I believe that we can select an experience, but in terms of parallel realities, I don't buy into that because there is one reality. There is one consciousness. There is one creator. You are a unique fragment of that one creator. When I first came across this, this filled me with a little bit of anxiety because I had bought into teachings about parallel realities and that made me feel quite safe. It made me feel like I had complete control over my external circumstances, that I could control people in my reality like they were robots. But there was something in me that was telling me that this wasn't quite the truth. <laughs> so if it is that you're experiencing a little bit of anxiety around this, I want you to know that there is nothing to worry about. It does not mean that you won't get what you want because as an expression of that one creator, you have the very same power to create in your own life, which ultimately means that you will get what you want. The teachings around parallel realities were coming from a place of fear. They were coming from a place of I might not get what I want. So I'm going to create this idea that there are parallel realities, that there are different versions of me in these realities. But when you can truly understand that reality is your mirror, then it isn't a possibility that you won't get what you want because the mirror has to reflect you. It has to reflect what you believe. It has to reflect who you say that you are, who you claim to be. It has to reflect that. So it isn't actually a possibility that you won't get what you want. And I'll explain why in a moment, because I know that there's a lot of people in the SP community and when you suggest this to them, it can make them feel quite scared because they've found this safety in parallel realities. And the line of thinking tends to be, well, I can have this person in my reality but there's multiple versions of them. So the other person can have them in their reality and it forms this sense of safety, which is false. It's not accurate. However, this happened to me when I was manifesting my person where I believed in parallel realities and it gave me this false sense of control. However, when I really did embody the teachings of the law of projection, what I understood was if I want the relationship and I want to be in this relationship purely, not from a sense of need, not from a sense of desperation, but I purely wanted this relationship because I wanted to grow from it, because I wanted the relationship, he wanted the relationship. So you can see how that's a direct mirror of what my state of mind and state of being was at the time. So how can you use the law of projection to your advantage. So first of all, you need to understand that at your highest expression, you are the God self. You are this one consciousness. You are 
a unique expression of this one creator. And when you can understand that, you can see how life is being lived through you. And you have this ability to create life through you. And that shows up in the form of desire. So it's literally making a decision and selecting where you want to go. When you have selected and got really clear on the direction you want to go in, it is done. It's done. Your only job is to put one foot in front of the other until you get there. So what's going on now in your present reality is a direct reflection of what's going on within you. So in order to get from where you are now to where you want to be, you are likely to be shown aspects of you that you haven't seen before or aspects of you that are still alive within you, that are still part of who you are, parts of your subconscious shadow, parts of your trauma, parts of your ego is all on show in front of you. Your limiting beliefs are on show in front of you. Now, these aren't obstacles that you need to overcome. It's not in the way of you getting your desire. It isn't a test to see if you're worthy and deserving of your desire. All as it literally is, is a mirror showing you where your limitations are so that you can free yourself of them and so that you can accept and receive what it is that you truly want. So I'm going to give you an example from my own life. So I wanted a secure relationship, a secure loving relationship with my person where we live together. That is what I truly wanted. So I put the desire out there. I imagined it. I knew that this desire was done. I went all in on this because I am a unique expression of a powerful creator. It's done. It wasn't up for discussion. However, in the meantime, from getting there to actually being in the relationship that I wanted to be in with my partner living with me, along the way, I was shown aspects of myself that did not belong in that desire. So it showed me my commitment issues. It showed me my self-esteem issues. It showed me how unworthy I thought I was. It showed me what my limitations were or my perceived limitations. It showed me my fear, but it wasn't actually anything that I had to worry about. It didn't mean that my desire wasn't going to happen. It was just a mirror reflection of what was going on within me. So I could actually process and release those fears, those beliefs, those identities that I had created, imagined myself to be. And I see this in my coaching clients, they have a desire and then they, for example, see their person on a dating website and they react to it, which is fine. Of course you react to it, you're a human being, but they react to it and make it mean that they're not going to get what they want. They're gonna, they're make, they make it mean that this is an obstacle, this is a problem, I need to resolve this. And I did the same thing. I would make his absence mean that it wasn't going to happen for me. That isn't what was going on. It was showing me and it showed my clients what their fear was, where their insecurities were, what that, what beliefs they had. And I often see people who have their desire, they tell themselves it's done and, and then they feel triggered and they make the trigger mean that they're not doing it right. They make the trigger mean that they're not going to get what they want. But you always get what you want. You always do even these triggers, even what's being show to, shown to you is still what you want. Because these anxieties and these insecurities and these triggers don't belong in your end result. They need to be cleared out so that you can actually experience and receive what it is that you truly want. I have a video on how to actually handle and deal with triggers that can really help you put some space in between yourself and what's going on so that you can actually start to so that you can actually start to investigate how this is you how is this part of you what do you believe about yourself that is making this happen so that you can actually start to work on those beliefs and release the old identities that you've had because in order to have what you want 
you will need to drop the identity of what you have. So in order to live with my partner, I had to drop the identity of being a single person. I had to drop the identity of as being somebody who was left un abandoned all the time. I had to drop the identity of somebody that struggles with relationships so that I could actually receive and enjoy what it is that I wanted. And at first, when you come across this, and at, at first, when you start to really pay attention to it, you might well feel victimized, but, but actually these teachings are there to empower you so that you can see how these beliefs are something that you've imagined yourself to be, that you've picked up from somewhere, probably somewhere in your childhood, that isn't you, it was never you to begin with. And the law of projection helps you actually realise that and start to actually identify with that part of you that is God, with that part of you that is the creator, that is this one consciousness that is connected to everything. Your subconscious mind and subconscious programming isn't a problem that you need to overcome. Your ego isn't a problem that you need to overcome. It's just a process of letting go of everything that was never actually you in the first place. And there are several ways to do this. I'm a really big fan of shadow work and inner child work and you know there are some teachings out there that will say oh I don't need to heal I don't need to do shadow work or inner child work but it is something that has personally really helped me particularly when it's come to long-standing beliefs and long-standing traumas so that I could actually uproot them completely and let go of them and move forward towards what I want. And sometimes when you feel triggered, it's hard to go into a, how is this me? And, you know, I do the same thing. I let myself completely react to it. I let myself go to town on it. I'm like, ah, this is happening to me. And then when I've calmed down, I can then go into, okay, how is this me? What belief is this showing me? What does this remind me of? How is this person's behavior in me? And as I've said before, I labelled my person for years as a commitment phobe, but it was a way to avoid my own commitment phobia. He was always showing me my own commitment phobia, which needed to be addressed so that I could actually accept and receive my desire. So even when things don't look like they're going the way that you want them to go, Remind yourself, it's already done. This is the way that it's unfolding. This is the way that it's supposed to happen so that I can receive my desire. Doesn't mean that it's going wrong. And I used to think, oh, this is just a detour. I'll get there in the end. So there's no need to ignore what's going on in front of you. Use what's going on in front of you to your advantage because it's projecting for a reason. It's, it's jumping out at you for a good, good reason. And as a course in love teaches, you know, relationships are there so that you can see these things. It's normal for us to want relationships and relationships will show you who you are at your deepest level. Relationships will teach you unconditional love. Relationships will teach you what your boundaries are, what your limitations are, what your assumptions and judgments are. So you can bring it back to yourself and let go of those things. So I really hope you found that video useful. If you have any questions at all, drop them in the comment box below and I will see you in the next video.